What's up guys? I'm very happy to tell you that we are going to start our chapter number 5 of Scott Fogler's book and essentially this chapter is about the collection and analysis of rate data. What does that mean? Rate data, remember, is essentially rate of reaction. That depends generally on concentration of the reactants. Normally you will get this value here, the constant, and maybe C of A to a certain power and C of B to another power. If you don't remember these things about the powers, maybe you want to go to chapter number three, because there's where I explain power models, the elementary rate of reaction, etc. And in this chapter, essentially, we're going to check out what happens when we have uh, information and we don't have the rate law, which is very common. Maybe you have concentration data versus time. So you got all this and you essentially want to fit a model, maybe the first order with respect of CA and well essentially many other models. The good thing here is that we're going to use one model that fits many reactors. For example, we're going to use a batch model and we're going to fit CSTRs of course the batch reactor PFR even though they are different the rate of reaction is of the same uh, reaction is the same so let me show you this diagram I always show you mm, we are right here we already seen that how to do mount balances we've seen how to size a uh, reactor with conversion we've seen the rate law and stoichiometry actually we're going to see this part a little bit more in this chapter, chapter number five. We got also the isothermal design. So ho hopefully you've seen that, you understand them because you know the basis of reactor engineering. What's next is essentially this chapter, collection and analysis of data. With this, we're going to be able to uh, analyze multiple reactions later. And not only that, if you have only one reaction, you will know or you will be able to show if it's a first order reaction, second order reaction, maybe it's a zero order reaction, whatever order of reaction it is, you may use these methods we're going to see and find what type of reaction you have. So we are analyzing this part right here once again and remember that once we got all these, well that's what we have right now and chapter 6 is about this and this is about the diffusion, concentration, we're going to be able to do all these even though we already can, for example, design a chemical reactor like a PFR, CSTR, batch, semi-batch, etc. because we know that if our reaction or our re process is isothermal that means T1 equals T2, we can do this. Uh, still we need energy balances for this but it's okay, we're going to see that later right now we need to still study rate loss and uh, let's do it let me show you the content of this chapter 5 essentially or I broke it into two sections section number one uses the batch reactor data analysis and even though it says batch reactor it applies to CSTR and to PFR I want to see that later of the why but essentially I just want to tell you that you can fit the reaction for example you know a and B will react to form C even though it's in a batch reactor, even though it's in a plug flow reactor or even though it's in a batch reactor. So I just want you to give you that small example. You know gasoline and oxygen will form a combustion and even though you do the combustion here or here or here, the combustion is essentially just a fuel with an oxidant will form CO2 and water and give energy. So let me show you what's in section one. We're going to see some methods. The most uh, important one is this one, excess method. We are going to use this and apply it to every one of these if it's possible. Excess method essentially is when you have two of them and one is in excess, so therefore you're going to consider that as a constant, so it's easier to model. Now comes the differential method which may be either apply with the graphical method these three methods are used for the differential method case so I 
prefer numerical method or polynomial fit personally. Graphical method is a little bit uh, boring and not that exact or precise. And if you can avoid it, try to do the numerical method or the polynomial fit, which I will say, depending on the rate of reaction, it might be the best one. Now, that was differential, as the name implies, uses differentials. And there is, of course, another one that says integral, which, of course, the name says by itself, it's a integral or using integrals. We're going to see first, zero, and second orders. And then we got this special one that uses initial rate of reactions, which is at the very beginning, very useful for uh, reversible reactions. And then you have the half-life method, which is also cool because it's relatively easy and it's very useful. Now, that was the batch reactor data, which may be applied to either batch, CSTR, or PFR. But we need another type of reactor for the PBR. You know, PBR is a heterogeneous reaction, and no, this one is homogeneous. There are liquid-liquid, gas-gas, or solid-solid. Maybe solid-solid not, but you always get one phase here, one phase. And in this differential reactor, we have two phases at least. And the only reactor we know like that is the PBR, that uses a solid and a fluid. So we're going to see how to analyze or account for that type of process. And it's very easy, actually. And you, I think you will get it very fast. The only difficult one, I will say, it's the differential method or even the excess method. Well, this one is easy to get, diff uh, it's difficult to apply. And let's do it. Let's start with section number one, which is the batch reactor data analysis. Uh, see you in the next video. What's up guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.